Hi there. In this lecture, you're not going to see me. You're just going to hear me. This is because I really want you to focus on what's important. That is Facebook's Insights panel. Facebook will automatically pick some pages that have similar audience to your page and you can add these pages to the pages to watch section. Facebook is not simply an advertising channel. It is also a very powerful tool to perform market research. Accessing your page's insights panel, you get access to a whole lot of information that will give you actual insights into customer preferences and habits that will be useful for you to maybe change your editorial plan. That's why I previously mentioned that the editorial plan is ever-changing, because it evolves as you collect more data about your customers, and Facebook plays a key role here. Now, start by visiting your page and clicking the Insights button at the top of your screen. The first section you see here shows data about last week. Under Page Likes, you can look at how many fans liked your page this week compared to last week. If these numbers are different, make an effort to understand why. Did you change your strategy? Did something happen that increased or decreased interest in your page? Post-reach is the number of unique people who have seen your posts this week and over the last week. This could be fans or friends of your friends. Again, compare the two numbers and if they are different, ask yourself why. Your reach is usually positively correlated with the numbers you find in the third column related to engagement. This is because of the ad rank that we already discussed. More interactions with your posts equals more people seeing your posts. Underneath these three columns, you find some additional information. There is a list of your five most recent posts with the number of interactions they generated and the people they reached, a great tool to see what worked best or worst. You can also add your competitors' pages to this list to track their performance. If any competitor performs really well, it's useful to see why, so you can get some ideas. You can see the percentage change here. Now, let's move on to the Likes section. Total page likes gives you the trend of your likes. Using the graph above, you can specify the time frame for which you want to display this information. The net like section here shows you the likes that were organic, that means unpaid, and those that were paid through Facebook ads, which we're going to see in our next lecture. You'll also see if anyone has unliked your page. You see here in red. This section here shows where your page likes happen. But now, let's continue to the reach section. As we said before, your reach is the number of unique people who see your content over a period of time. Light orange is for organic reach, dark orange is for paid reach, that is through Facebook ads. If you click on any section of the graph, you will see the post that created the reach displayed. Here you get to see the trends related to likes, comments, and shares on posts. Once again, if you click, you can view the posts related to those trends. You see that at the top of our page, we have a um, message saying that Facebook is running a test allowing people to have different reactions to posts, so not just like, but they will also be able to like, love, laugh, and have other reactions to page posts. So this graph is already here, even if for this page specifically, uh, people still don't have the option to laugh, wow, or haha, any posts. So you only see likes here. But once the feature is active, you will also be able to see data for these other columns. This graph is extremely important. It shows you if someone has stopped following your page or reported you as spam. 
If this happens, you need to think about what made your posts look like spam. The total reach shows your post reach plus any content that was posted to your page and shown to your fans. Now let's go to visits. Under the visits tab, you can see the number of times your Facebook page is visited. Don't worry if this number seems low with respect to your total fans, because usually fans don't revisit your page once they become a fan. Instead, they see your posts on their newsfeed. Below, you see the specific sources of traffic. The post section is split into three main areas. The first one here shows you how many of your fans are online at any given time during the day. This is a key information you need to include in your editorial plan. Facebook is the only social network that's going to give you this information. Here you have a list of the posts you shared on your page by type. You can see what works best for you and what doesn't. Generally, image posts tend to perform best, but it may not be the case for you. If there are some pages that you are watching, you will see here another section with the top posts from those pages. And it's useful to see what works well for your competitors. If you shared videos on your Facebook page, you will see a video tab here with some data about how many people watch your videos and how many of them actually watch for more than 30 seconds. This is important because it shows you whether your videos are actually working or not. If they are engaging videos, people are going to watch until the end of the clip. Yeah, here are some statistics about videos. Now let's move on to the People tab. The People tab is fundamental for you to understand whether you are targeting the right people, or at least the people that you thought you were targeting. This is also very useful to check whether your editorial plan needs some changes. You have a breakdown of the demographics of your fans on the basis of gender, country, city, language, etc. You can see the same breakdown for the people who see your posts and those who interact with your posts under the People Engage tab. On the top right here, you have an expert button. By clicking on it, you can export your data in Excel format or a CSV for further analysis. So you can also choose the time frame and the type of data you wish to export. And this is basically all you need to know about Facebook Insights. I totally love this panel because it gives you so much information. We'll see that, for example, Twitter and Instagram don't give you access to this type of details because they just don't have it. So please try to explore the Insights panel of your page, then go back to your editorial plan and make some changes if you need to. I'll talk to you in our next lecture.